Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sure you can do it a bit better. Let this hall sound like a mighty thunder. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good evening, brothers and sisters. It's nice to see smiling and happy faces. Are you happy to be here? Yes. Praise the Lord. You know, um, let's take this time to just wish each other with this beautiful smile and say Jesus loves you. Come on, let's lift your, let's wish your neighbor on your right and left and say Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you, brothers and sisters. God the Father loves you. You know, in John 3, 16, the scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Amen. Indeed, you believe in Jesus. You know, 2,000 years ago, when Jesus walked on earth, he performed many miracles. But the elders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees did not believe in Jesus. They did not believe. I mean, though they knew the scriptures so well, they did not believe in Jesus. You know, sometimes you wonder the names Sadducees and Pharisees are so apt. Though Jesus was near them, the Pharisees were far to see Jesus. And Sadducees, Though Jesus was spreading the good news of the kingdom of God, they were sad to see Jesus. They were sad to, to witness the word of God, the living Jesus. But you brothers and sisters, you have not seen, yet you believe. Jesus said, blessed are the ones who have not seen, yet believe. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is a gift from God to us. And it's not just Jesus. Through Jesus, we receive the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus, we receive the Word of God. The Word of God, which is sharper than the double-edged sword. The Word of God, which brings healing and deliverance. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise Come on, brothers and sisters, for the loving God, for the mighty God, don't you think he deserves a mighty praise? Yes. Come on, let's lift your hands and praise the living Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. You're the living God. You're the Abba. You're the Jehovah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Abba Father. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord, for your living word. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You know, John 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Do you know who is the he that John the apostle is referring to? Jesus, yes, Jesus was in the beginning. He is the word which became flesh. Hallelujah. 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 Brothers and sisters, the word of God has mighty power. You know, the word of God, when we use it with faith, when we praise God, it is a creator's toolbox which can fix anything, which can fix anyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like to share a testimony how the Word of God changed my life. You know, uh, when COVID hit, uh, the company that I was working for um, was making people redundant. And apparently, I was also made redundant. And I did not see this coming. I was very upset, very sad. I was literally very depressed, not talking to anyone. And my family, they said, why don't you call Brother Alfred? He will pray for you and he will also uh, request the intercessory group to pray for me. We called Brother Alfred and he, you know, he lifted my spirits. He, he gave me the hope. He gave me nine scriptures and he said, Felba, set your heart first in the kingdom of God 
and His righteousness and everything else will follow. Hallelujah. 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 You know, from among the nine scriptures that He gave me, two scriptures were very dear to my heart. You know, one of them was Isaiah 45 verse 3. He said, I will give you treasures hidden in darkness and riches stored in secret places so that you may know I am God, the God of Israel who has called you by your name. Hallelujah. 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 Brothers and sisters, from that time, my prayers changed, you know, in a way that I would say, God, please bless me with a good job. You know, I changed that mindset and I was like, Lord, use me for your kingdom. Lord Jesus, use me to serve your kingdom. Use me and my family to serve your kingdom. And little did I know, I kept, I kept meditating on these scriptures day in and out. And so much so I personalized it to myself, like Jesus, you're talking to me. Jesus, you're saying that I will give you, Felba, the, the treasures hidden in darkness and riches stored in secret places. You know, every time I kept reciting the scriptures, made me walking, washing the dishes, every time scriptures kept reciting in my mind. Brothers and sisters, I was given 30 days notice period. On the last day, I receive a call from HR saying that, Felba, there is a position, a temp position in the finance department. We would like you to join. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Brothers and sisters, God was not done with me. That's, that was not it. You know, um, they gave me a six months contract and in the fifth month, I received another call. The department which made me redundant, called me back saying that Felba, there's a project, we want you to join back in a permanent uh, role. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, when you keep meditating on the word of God, God performs mighty miracles. Hallelujah. 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 You know, God was not done with me even then. Uh, I worked for two months in the, in the same role back again and then I received another call because you know during the six months I was trying for another job and I received a lot of calls but somehow in the last interview I, I just couldn't make it. Uh, I mean I didn't, I didn't pass through and not just during the uh, COVID times even before that I was always wanting a change but it never, I was never making it through to the final round of the interview. But this time it was different. You know, this time, why was it different? Because God was with me and I was reciting the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. <laughs> when I was working with the department, um, you know, I received a call from a company that was in Dubai. And they said that, you know, we have a role for you and it's in the HR role. And I have, you know, uh, working with the current company, I had experience working for different, different uh, departments. But then, and you know, there were times I used to say, Lord, I'm a jack of all trades, but master of none, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I was doubting myself. And, but then God gave me the hope. They said, God said, you know, Felba, just take the job, even if it is in Dubai. And you know, I, I was never a fan of driving, but somehow God gave me the courage to take that job, even if it was a lesser salary. He got inspired me to take that job. Brothers and sisters, I took that job and then my family used to see me working literally 24-7. Within six months of my probation, I got a double promotion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know what? With double promotion comes double responsibilities. <laughs> so I was just not having a family life balance. Again, 24 hours working and driving to Dubai. My mom-in-law was worried, am I going to reach back home safely? Because I would barely sleep. <laughs> but you know what? Within a year and a half, somehow, you know, God opened a window of opportunity. There was another opportunity that came my way. And that was for an interview, um, you know, for a position of an HR specialist. So, I praise the Lord, I passed that interview. When I got the offer letter, it was a position, uh, the position that was mentioned in the offer letter was manager, Middle East. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Today, I'm managing the entire Middle East operation of the HR function. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise 
Praise the Lord. All glory and honor belongs to Almighty God Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The word is sharper than the double-edged sword. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you believe in the word and give praise to the Lord and even pray for others who are in need of a job or, or any situation, you will see your situation changing. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, brothers and sisters. Let's lift your hands up and praise the living God. He is the mighty King. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Abba Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's an our praise is incomplete without a, a joyful song to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, then let's sing with the choir. Clap your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. I welcome every one of you who are gathered here today for this prayer gathering. I request my brothers and sisters, first of all, let's give a big hand to the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> my brothers and sisters, we are in the presence of a mighty and powerful God. You all heard today the Felba's testimony, how the word of God helped her to grow when you are steadfast with the Lord, how you can grow physically, spiritually, and every area of life. Isn't it, my brothers and sisters? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, let's take it. The Word of God, my brothers and sisters, I'm taking that topic today. Very interesting topic. Excuses to follow Jesus. Okay. You know, so let's get into that. Luke chapter 9, verses 57 to 62. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. And he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one puts a hand to the plow 
and looks back is fit for the services in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters. Okay, let's look into the first one. That is the heading, my brothers and sisters, I can give. As I will follow you wherever you go. My brothers and sisters. That's the first one. Yeah. Look into that, my brothers and sisters. Did Jesus accept him straight away? Okay, come, follow me. You know, you are ready to come along with me? Come. Did Jesus say to him? Why didn't Jesus didn't say to him? You know, he made him realize how difficult to follow him. You know, the path is not easy. To follow the path of Jesus is not easy. He made this particular man realize, you know, the real situation of following Jesus. He said, the foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but son of man has nowhere to lay his head. He is trying to tell him, I am a homeless man. My brothers and sisters, now, you want to follow me? I'm sure that fellow, they ran away. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, you know, so the thought must have come, where I'm going to sleep tonight? Jesus is saying, you know, birds have nest and the foxes have holes. I have nowhere to lay my head. Where I have to lay my head? Am I going to sleep on the grass? I am going to sleep on the roadside. Where I am going to sleep tonight? Where is the comfort? Where is the luxury? Nothing is there with the Jesus. Let me go back. My brothers and sisters, how many people are ready to, the reality hits them, they're not ready to follow Jesus. That's why I'm telling you, my brother, the path of Jesus is not easy. You know, but one thing, my brothers and sisters, you are assured of something great. Eternity with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, that's why let me get into the more deeper, my brothers and sisters. I will give you one beautiful testimony of my, one of my good friends called Brother Chanan. Brother Chanan, the one day, was sharing with me, you know, he comes and stays sometimes with me. He was telling me, brother, see, one day, I am, he's a preacher. He travels more than 50 countries and preaches more than 50 countries in the world. You know, he told me, brother, one day, I am in Taj Hotel in Mumbai. You all know the Taj? Yeah. What the full name of the Taj? Taj Intercon? What do you call for that? Taj, uh, Taj Continent? I do not know. Taj. Only Taj. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Whatever it is. Everybody knows Taj Hotels. Yeah. Okay. My brother and sister, this is a five-star hotel. Okay. From India. It's a very famous. I think in Dubai also one, uh, uh, this thing is there. Right? Yes. Yeah. My brother and sister, one day I'm in Taj Hotel. And next day, where do you know, brother, where I am? I'm in Kerala. You know, and I don't have, a, they will take me from remote village. You know, where I'm pre out to preach will be a very remote village. And there, they don't even have a toilet. You know, it's like a thatched roof and there's a big hole there. <laughs> Can you imagine? I have to... You know, in that situation I am in. Reality. My brother and sister, one day he is uh, in Mumbai, big city, preaching the word of God, and may they organize this, arrange for him to stay in a five-star hotel in Taj. Next day, Brother Jananda is in Kerala in a remote village where there is not even a toilet facility. And one day, he is in where my brother and sister, as I told you, in a five-star hotel. Next day, he is in a village in Orissa, with only congee and pickle, nothing else you get there. You see, he is eating a five-star food, and next day he is uh, he is going to preach in Orissa, in the remote village, where there is you have to eat only congee and pickle. He said nothing else you get. I carry pickle from Bangalore. He is based in Bangalore, and I take that pickle every time eating the same thing. You see, my brothers and sisters. Yeah, your love, but the reality of this brother is not an easy one. One day, my brother and sister, he has got a big massive conferences. 
maybe 100,000 people he is preaching. My brothers and sisters, and one day he is also preaching in some place in India where there is Bajrangadal and uh, all this, you know, and what is the other big, uh, uh, some of these, huh? RSS, yes, RSS, Bajrangadal, all people are threatening him, they will kill him. You see, his life is also threatened. Because they say he's going to many Hindu areas and all that are dominated by this uh, Bajrangdal RSS people. They're threatening him, will kill you. Threat for his life. My brothers and sisters, in this situation, this brother is continuing his mission. And how many years he has preached till, till now? 40 years for the Lord. Shall we give a big hand to the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. He told me, brother, one thing I see. I only one thing I see is, you know, my brother and sister, I'm seeing for eternity to be with my Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters. You know, so that's why he's an engineer by profession. He's a highly qualified man and uh, very well to do. Family, she has come. He's a mother, a doctor, but see the suffering what he's going through. You know, all he's surrendering to Jesus. Because to follow Jesus is not easy. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. My brother, sister, that's why 2 Corinthians, my brother says 11, chapter 24 to 29. Look into this. Five times, this St. Paul is speaking here. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the country, in danger at sea, in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and I have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been in cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak and I do not feel weak. Who is led into sin and I do not inwardly burn. See how much love, how much sacrifice. Isn't it my brothers and sisters? How many times in beaten, danger from sea, danger from land, danger from friends, danger from enemies, danger from everywhere. No food, thirst, everything to follow Jesus. But my brothers and sisters, only see, not only that, another terrible, terrible, this, uh, he's having, uh, my brothers and sisters, the feeling for the people, for the churches. You see, my brother and sister means that he doesn't want the people to be weakened. Because he says, it's a tremendous pain for me when people become weak. My brother and sister, that should not happen. You know, so St. Paul is feeling that more than anything, that pain of losing his people. You know, that's what my brothers and sisters. And today, so let's look into the second point, my brothers and sisters. I remember when I went to the Divine Retreat Center, Moringur, Pota. I've been there nearly eight times for the retreats. You know, it's my like second home for me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, my brothers and sisters, once I went, I took some Divine Mercy pictures. You know, and I was distributing some of the people met me over there. And they told me, brother, okay, one, I think... Father Michael Payapali was there. He gave a very inspiring preaching. You know, about serving the kingdom of God dedicatedly. And they were all inspired. And I gave them the pictures of divine mercy. And some of them from Malaysia and some other countries. And then they spoke to me. Brother, we also want to spread the divine mercy in Malaysia and other. So many countries they told me. And uh, you know... Uh, we'll take down your number, everything that took down, my address that took down, we'll contact you. We want the evangelizing to be done in Malaysia and other countries. Oh, I was very happy. Wow. You know, these are the people, you know, spreading the divine mercy all over the world. Now it's a beautiful opportunity. And uh, 
can you believe my brothers and sisters after they went home i didn't get one single call or anybody approach me for one single picture mission was over with the retreat you know my brothers and sisters they must have counted the cost of spreading this mission oh be maybe they must have thought even though i told them i will help in every way but they did not trust maybe or wow, how much trouble is there we have to get the pictures from uae again we have to spread it we have to contact the churches we have to contact the people we have to spread the divine mercy how much headache is there it is better not to do it finish mission my brother and sister but there was a sister who contacted me in the divine retreat center from andhra pradesh she told me brother you know i want the pictures to spread in andhra pradesh will you help me i said how many pictures you require sister 15000 i said i will make arrangement for you my brothers and sisters i came i made the arrangement i everything i organized and i sent 15000 pictures to the bishop of uh, you know in the andhra pradesh you know this is a place i will tell you i forgot that uh, uh, nellore bishop of nellore you know uh, bishop prakasham is name because prakasham you know he's in touch with me till today because i sent him three times the consignments you know in andhra pradesh and i translated all this telugu you know divine mercy into a uh, not from english to telugu he gave me this this thing all the uh, whatever necessary things to be done and i did it and my brothers and sisters till today day before yesterday also he sent me a message i am praying for you alfred you know you continue your mission hallelujah hallelujah you see my brothers and sisters the mission what you are taken you should not give it up you have to continue for the glory of god you put one step god will put 10 steps praise the lord hallelujah you know he does that he says so many people do not trust that god will help but god is always there to help and guide and my brother should to direct you praise the lord and he likes the perseverance you see my brother just yesterday to yesterday one of our consignment to is on the ship to uk hallelujah it's a big consignment and we are going to evangelize uk now praise the lord hallelujah and i'm very happy to evangelize do you know the uk has got one atheist prime minister atheist prime minister he doesn't believe in god even the other day you know you have to sign for it you know when you are taking the oath you know what you have to do you know, there is a some form is there format or something you have to sign on that and there is a something uh, you have to in god something i trust something is there you know he said i don't want to sign this change the whole thing i don't want to sign that my brothers and sisters such a hardcore atheist and i said lord this is the best thing we are sending divine mercy to save uk praise the lord <laughs> hallelujah you see my brothers and sisters you know that's what is required perseverance if you don't give, you give up my brothers and sisters we have hundreds of excuses to stay away from the lord to stay away from the prayers to stay away from everything of the spiritual because the world is so attractive isn't it my brothers and sisters it's um, you know if you come to the city so so flashing things are there wow shopping is there and this thing that uh, whiskey bottles are shining in dubai <laughs> you see not ordinary bottles okay my brothers and sisters everything shining glittering you know so my brothers and sisters that attracts us you know and let me get you my brothers and sisters here let's say the second point here is that my brothers and sisters let's get into that bury my father the second excuse came let's get into that luke chapter 959 to 16 he said to another man follow me <clears throat> but he replied lord first let me go and bury my father my brothers and sisters what is the priority here what is the priority here but jesus said to him let the dead bury their own dead but you go and proclaim the kingdom of god you go and proclaim the kingdom of god that is necessary 
for you right at this moment. There are people who will bury the dead. You see, my brothers and sisters, many a times, our priority is not Jesus. Hallelujah. You understand, my brothers and sisters? Our priority is not Jesus. You know, we give priority for many things in this world, but not Jesus. Here, this man is also trying, let me go and bury my father. You know, excuses. He's asking excuses because he doesn't want to follow Jesus. You see, God, Jesus knows that. He said, let the dead bury their own dead. There will be other people. But you come, follow and spread the word that he doesn't want. My brothers and sisters, that is why many a times we are giving excuses. You know, okay, I'm so busy in the office, so much work in the office, so much, you know, when I get up, it is a little late, you know, I got so many problems in my family on this and that and this and that. I got to programs to go. I got to this year, go, go here. I could go there. We give thousand excuses, my brothers and sisters. You know, when it comes to God, when it comes to prayer sessions, when it's to come to pray, my brothers and sisters, that will not stand good for us. Hallelujah. You know, the priority should be for prayers. The priority to sp should be to spread the word and to reach out to people and save the people. And all things will follow. Matthew 6, 30 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given unto you. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, that's why I'm telling you, do not take and give excuses. You can give hundreds of excuses, my brothers and sisters. You know, and uh, that's why it's very important, you know. Yeah. Let me give you one, uh, my brothers and sisters. I, one brother, he was regularly coming. He had a problem. You know, he was a very regular member. He had some children problem and this and that. He was coming. And uh, I was very happy to see him regularly. I was very happy. And all his problem got solved. After he came to the prayer gathering of divine mercy. After some time, I noticed he's not coming. I met him one day right outside the church. You know, he said, brother, where are you? I don't see you. No, brother. I get only one day, no? That one day I get. So I'm going out. I said, brother, that one day is also, you know, previously when you had a problem, you used to use that one day to come at the feet of Jesus and you got all your problems solved. Remember that? But now you want to one day. You see, now all your problems are solved. You say, one day free. I want to go out. My brothers and sisters, you know, there is so many ways you can avoid. You know, but the priority should be given to Jesus, isn't it? You see, if you give the priority, you know, then God is with you. Hallelujah. He sees your steadfast spirit, my brothers and sisters. But if you give up, you know, you are gone, my brothers and sisters. That's why... I always tell my intercessory ministry members, you know, this is what, sometimes you have a little extra effort. You know, I have an intercessory ministry, we are praying every day. You know, my brothers and sisters online, you know, and uh, I tell them, see, you're coming for an hour. That extra effort is there, but God will reward you that extra effort. You know, because if you say, no, I have to nine to six mile. I am up to the clock. I am watching my clock all the time. Okay? 9 to 6. 9 o'clock I want to sleep. 6 o'clock I have to get up. My, you know, I want to keep up my health. I want to maintain my health. I have to be absolutely perfect. All these things. Otherwise my health will get, you know, disturbed. And this and that, this and that. You know, my brothers and sisters. If everyone is like that, who will bring the people to the kingdom of God? Tell me. If everybody follows their lifestyle, nine to six false uh, lifestyle, for example, you know, who will bring the people, who will make the people know about Jesus? Tell me. So my brothers and sisters, it is so important. You see, if you have to make, you have to take that extra pain, extra strain. The other day, I was just joking with my daughter. You know, two days back, I was telling her name is Calvita, you all know about her, okay. So say Calvita, you see, now, tomorrow, Saturday, Friday night, I told this, yeah, Friday, Saturday, like many people, they want to relax on Saturday. I want to sleep up to 12 o'clock in the afternoon. 
you know, I want to have a nice sleep. You know, most of the people sleep 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. You know, it's a day to relax, tough days, other days. You know, I want to get up only 12 o'clock in the afternoon. She had a big laugh. She said, Tada, I know, you minus six hours in that. <laughs> because I start my day at six o'clock in the morning. My brothers and sisters, people can sleep. You know, if I also same sleep my brothers and sisters in the same way, do you think I can serve the kingdom of God? I have to be steady with the Lord. You understand, no? For me, no holiday. The holiday or no holiday, my brothers and sisters, every single day I have to be in front of my Jesus to worship him, praise him, thank him, glorify him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brother said, then only God can work in my life, my brothers and sisters. He cannot work in my life. If you are taking a clock, I don't want extra strain. I don't want extra pain. No. You know, my brothers and sisters, if you take extra strain, extra pain, God will give you that extra one day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So my brothers and sisters, that's why it's very important, you know, that you continue here. Now let's get into the my brothers and sisters. Here, Matthew chapter 10, verse 37 to 39. Let's get into that. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. My brother, whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses the life for my sake will find it. You see, my brothers and sisters, this word is very powerful. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. You see, I'll give you a beautiful testimony, then you'll understand. It happened in Kerala. You know, there was a gentleman. He was in love with his wife. Everything is to do to satisfy his wife. He is to bring her beautiful saris and make her happy. He has to take her out. And all the time, you know, doing everything for his wife. He was madly in love with his wife. But he forgot about Jesus. Oh, everything too. It literally worship of his wife. You know, but he forgot to spend time with God. One day, my brothers and sisters, he got a shock of his life. When he came home, when he opened the door, you know, my brother and sister, his wife was dead, stabbed by somebody, full of blood all over the floor. Just imagine a person who literally in love with, so much in love with his wife, now seeing dead body, couldn't take it. Then what happened? He came to know it was who killed? His own son's friend, close friend. And they used to literally call him son. He used to be very regular in the house. Now that boy had fallen into bad company. He was, became a drug addict because he needed money. He thought this is the best chance for me. But no one was there. But this lady allowed because the son she used to treat him. And he took the advantage. And he killed her and took everything, whatever that ran away. My brothers and sisters, what a shock for this man. He couldn't get over this. You know, this shock for a long time. And he was crying, wailing, crying, wailing every single day. And you know, that time one brother came. Brother, I'm very sad to see you in this state. You know, I want to tell you. You know, why don't you go to Divan Retreat Center, Moringo for a retreat? Definitely, you'll get the peace. You know, he decided to go to the retreat center. You know, when the preacher preached about the idol worship, my brothers and sisters, he understood he was worshipping his wife, and wife became an idol for him. You see, the scripture is so, if you love your father or mother more than me, you're not worthy of me. You see, he understood this scripture. He knew he had neglected a spiritual life completely. Completely to worship his wife, my brothers and sisters, and he was completely transformed. He decided, I will spend my time with Jesus. 
he became a volunteer in the divine retreat center moringur and testifying to the people today my brothers and sister telling his real story what happened how much he was in love with his wife but he neglected his jesus you know the love of jesus and that's why god removed that idol from his life god removed that idol from his life he is giving this testimony so now he is concentrating to serve the kingdom of god hallelujah hallelujah you see my brothers and sisters you know that's why it's very important my brothers and sisters there are so many people may come into your life you may be loving them so much if you neglect jesus you are in trouble hallelujah that's why my brothers and sisters the first thing in your life the first person in your life should be jesus you know then everything will work in your life you know although you cannot do idol worship for example you love your children so much you know then what happens one day you see your children are watching something bad you know on the tv or on the internet whatever you know now you love them so much you know this will offend jesus but still you will keep quiet not to offend your children then what will happen these children will become an idol for you praise the lord hallelujah you are ready to offend jesus but not your children then these children are an idol for you that's why my brothers and sisters you have to be careful you know so the first priority in your life should be jesus and nothing else praise the lord then only god will work in your life give the first place in your life to jesus the third point here my brothers and sister goodbye to my family praise the lord hallelujah see let's look look into the scripture look chapter 961 to 62 still another said i will follow you lord but first let me go back and say say what is that goodbye to my family wow one more excuse goodbye i want to say goodbye today to my family then i'll follow you my brothers and sisters one thing i tell you you know we can give hundreds of you know excuses see let's look into that next scripture jesus replied no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of god hallelujah my brother nobody no one who puts a hand on the plow you know in the olden days if you have a you know field you must be you must have done or seen some farming right my brother and sister there's a plow you understand no they put their leg or something like that in the plow they keep on moving that plow you know so just imagine he has to go on the straight you know he should not be crooked like this you know so if you want to plow properly if you keep on looking back my brothers and sisters and what will happen that plow will wear of course you understand now it will not go in the straight line so my brothers and sisters in the same way you know what it says if you put your hand on the plow if you look back you are unfit for the kingdom of god that means if you have started serving the kingdom of god but if you have the knowledge of god if you walk back you are not fit for the kingdom of god tremendous powerful word my brother says stop me i was also going through once upon a time a terrible persecution you cannot even imagine i cannot share with you that kind of persecution and ultimately i came to the point you know i was attacked by the satanic demonic attacks were coming come on leave this all go you know i that kind of a operation that's the time my brothers and sisters you know i quite came to that stage you know and god spoke to me through this word look 962 he said if you put your hand on the plow and if you look back you are unfit for the kingdom of god that stopped me praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah my brother and sister that's why i'm telling you when you start this work of god you know in any area or your prayer life with the lord and my brother and sisters don't stop it continue you see some people come for prayers you know only for few purposes you know for example they may be thinking now i don't have a job if i go to divine mercy prayer gathering i will get a good job 
Wow, some people give a beautiful testimony. Very inspiring. Praise God. I will also come to Divine Mercy Prayer Gathering. Get a wonderful job. And after my job is over, Masalama Jesus. Bye-bye to you. Goodbye to you, Jesus. You see how many people have said goodbye to Divine Mercy for prayers till they got the something they wanted. There was a youngster, you know, one day. You know, this youngster... I wrote to me several times and he came to divine mercy and he was in desperate state of job and you know he got a good job after coming to divine mercy he was blessed with a good job and one day he's running away you know whenever i see he runs that way if i see this side he will run that way you know one day i said sister maria mr sister maria you look into the maria you look into that where is the boy this is not coming then she caught him one day <laughs> <laughs> Why you are not coming? She sent several messages to him, you know, and he's not replying on them. He's not replying. And, uh, you know, and he gives such excuses, excuses, he ran away. My brother said, never turned back. You see, my brothers and sisters, you know, these people, they're thinking this prayer is only to get certain things from the Lord, like a genie. You understand? No, Jesus is a genie. He'll give us. <laughs> you see, my brother, Aladdin, you know, my brothers and sisters, you know, one thing we have to understand, you know, Jesus is not genie. He wants your perseverance. You are not coming here for a small job, my brothers and sisters. God can open up 100 jobs for you. You understand? Felba gave a beautiful testimony. How many openings she got? Praise God, isn't it? God can give you. You know, my brothers and sisters, you have to understand one thing from all this. You know, God is giving you. Why He is giving you? Why He is blessing you? To know Him more closely and understand Him in a better way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that you remain steadfast with Him. What is His plan? Do you think His plan is for you to get one job? No. My brother, do you think He has to? You have got a financial problem and you have got a breakthrough. He is coming to divine mercy. I got a financial breakthrough. Wow. My brother and sister, God is not interested in our small fi financial problem. He can solve anything. Hallelujah. Isaiah 45, 3 says very clearly, I will give you treasures from the dark corners of the world. Dark secrets, wherever he can give you. My brother, then you will acknowledge that I am the Lord, your God, who has called you by name. Hallelujah. You see, God can give you from anywhere. He can give a breakthrough for you anywhere. Why is giving you that breakthrough? He's giving a breakthrough so that you will know him more closely and you will know his love for you and you will become more steadfast with him and continue till you get eternity with him hallelujah hallelujah that's the plan of jesus my brothers and sisters he's not worried about your small job that's not the job plan of job or your financial problem or domestic problem no his plan he's blessing you here is so that you become steadfast and know him more closely. And one day, you will be with him in eternity by remaining steadfast with him. Hallelujah. You see, my brother, that's the plan of God. If you are coming with any other intention, you are coming in the wrong intention. Wrong place, my brothers and sisters. I tell you that. You know, that's why you have to continue as long as you live. I'm running this mission for the more than 25 years, my brothers and sisters. From the time I was touched. You see, I could have run away. You see, God has blessed me with everything what I require. But it's not the, my intention. My intention is not that, my brothers and sisters. My intention is to say, well, every day I tell Jesus, I want to bring a millions of souls to your kingdom, Lord, and die with such joy, and I want to be with you one day. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, and I'm working towards that. And I, you know, almost I've achieved many, many millions of people by now by spreading the divine mercy all over the world. You see? I've not given up, you know. So my brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, you know, that's why the Lord, you know, this is very important. Let, let's look at Lord's wife. What did the Lord's wife? The angels, they were taking the whole family, right? Now Sodom and Gomorrah will be, they are going to put the brimstone and a fire will be put on there because the, there was a homosexuality in this place. You see, God was angry. He sent his angels and the angels are bringing out Lot and his wife and his daughters, my brother. But one warning was given. When you are running, if you hear the sound, anything, don't look back. And who looked back? 
Who looked back? Lord's wife. And what happened to her? She became a pillar of salt. This, uh, you know, my brothers and sisters, this is a warning to everyone who wants to look back. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, you should never look back. Even the Israelites made the same mistake. My brothers and sisters, God was giving them a promised land. You know the situation where they were in. You know the situation they were in? They were tortured. You know, the Pharaoh of Egypt was literally torturing them. Making their life so miserable, so miserable. And he had slaughtered the, even the children below the age of two. You know, so much suffering they were going. You see, my brothers and sisters, and that is the time they were crying out. And God heard their voice and he gave the assignment to Moses and Aaron, my brothers and sisters, to loot them. Now what happened? My brothers and sisters, remember every time these Israelites were big grumblers, every time they come across a small problem, instead of worshipping and praising God and praying to him, they will grumble and they keep the stones ready in their pocket. You know, throw, to throw at whom? Moses and Aaron. You see, stones are ready in the pocket. You know, my brothers and sisters, such way Moses and Aaron were going through the suffering, my brothers and sisters. And remember, you know, and they, every time they had a problem, they will look back. They will remember Egypt. You understand? They will say, wow, here you see what nonsense in this desert. We don't have kakadi. We don't have cucumber. We don't have this, you know, carrot. We don't have, uh, what is the other vegetable? Huh? Bangan. <laughs> okay. So, all this is not there. You know, you know, my brother, if I tell you a competition I give you, I think you'll tell me 100 vegetables. <laughs> okay. You see, all these things we used to enjoy, you know, watermelon, this thing, that thing, wow. You know, in Egypt, what was there and here, what is this in the desert? Misery, misery. You know, my brothers and sisters, you know, every time they will look back. That should not happen in our life. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have to look forward. We have to look forward to the eternal kingdom of Jesus. Praise the Lord. What does it promise for us? First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 says, What no eye has seen, no ear has ever heard, no mind can ever comprehend. All those things God has prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah. Shall we give a big hand to this God? Hallelujah. <laughs> Revelation 21 4 says very clear, No, there will be no, no mourning. My brothers and sisters, and no crying, no kerchief, no tissues, Nothing to wipe your tears. Praise the Lord. There will be what will be there in heaven? Joy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Only joy, 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 joy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, my brother, that's what will be in heaven. No cooking for ladies also. Praise the Lord. <laughs> They're very happy about it. <laughs> My wife says every time, when I tell their heaven, there's no crying, nothing, wow, no cooking also, no? Yes, I said, no, no. <laughs> Praise God. You see, my brothers and sisters, so one thing I tell you, so there will be joy. So you have to look for that, my brothers and sisters. The eternity with Jesus. Not get distracted with a small thing. If you give an excuse, for example, when I call sometimes, some of my team members, they tell me all kinds of excuses. Whom they are giving excuse? Or even if you are, when I meet some people, they give me an excuse. If you give an excuse, what will happen? My brother and sister, if you are telling, Brother Alfred, I cannot make it, my head is aching today so much. But you are not head is aching, you are just telling me lies. You know my brother and sister, whom you are trying to tell? It's to, not to me excuse. You are telling Jesus, I have no time for you. Remember that. Jesus, I have no time for you. That should not happen. I remember one youngster, I used to go to the camps, you know, labor camps to bring the people to the prayer gathering. You know, my brother, sister, one young boy, he told me one day this testimony. Sometimes I used to get seven, eight times to bring one fellow out. You know, it happened like that in Alkus. I had gone to one camp, they bring one young boy. He was always avoiding me. But I was behind him. And, and he used to tell me, when Brother Alfred used to come, I used to hide in the toilet. You see, 
Yeah, he used to come, I used to hide in the toilet. But one day, so much is coming, I felt sad. So I came to the prayer gathering. And that day I was touched. I knew why he was coming. I knew why he was coming. And now I'm a permanent member in the Divine Mercy Prayer Gathering. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. My brother said, only one preaching of my transformed his life. That's why I always used to tell the people, come to my one preaching. After that, if you don't want, don't come. <laughs> I used to tell the labor camps boys. You see, if you don't want to listen to my preaching after that, you don't come. But only one touch. I used to pray, Lord, touch them. Praise God. And they used to be touched. Hallelujah. You see, my brother and sister, it's very important. So don't give up your spiritual life. Make it stronger. So look at it, my brother and sister. Here the word of God says, uh, uh, Ma um, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19 to 20. Let's get into that. You see, come follow me, Jesus said. I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left the nets and followed him. Hallelujah. They left the nets and followed him. And again, Mark chapter 1, verse 20. John and James here. John and James. You know, without delay, he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Hallelujah. Jesus is not asking you like that, my brothers and sisters. That was the extreme. But they left everything. Maybe we know Peter was a married man. He left. You know, my brothers and sisters and followed Jesus day and night. You see, but now Peter is very anxious to know what we will get, Lord, if we follow you. Very anxious to know. Let me get into the scripture. Here, 2 Corinthians 5.15. Go back, please. 2 Corinthians 5.15. And he died for all. And those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and were raised again. You see? Yeah. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but whom we should live. My brother and sister, we should live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Again, the scripture, Matthew 19, 27 to 29. Listen, Peter is very anxious here. Peter answered him, we have left everything, Lord, to follow you. What then will be there for us? What then? What are we going to get for following you? Now, answer is for you also, my brothers and sisters. Now, Jesus speaking. Jesus said to them, I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses, brothers, sisters, father, mother, wife, or children of fields for my sake will receive, huh? how many times? 100 times as much, and not only that, and will, read it. Inherit eternal life. Hallelujah. Shall we give a big hand to this Lord? Hallelujah. Hundred times as much and we'll have eternal life. The greatest gift you can ever get, my brothers and sisters. How many people are, you know, in the world now practice? Like the Olympics, four years. Day and night, day and night, they give up their best thing. They give up ice cream. They give up prata. They give up this thing, that thing. My brother, they have written about all these people. You know, for what? To get fit, do the best, and to win one prize, a gold or silver or bronze. That will fade away one day, my brothers and sisters. But one thing will not fade away, the eternal gift. That's the greatest gift you can ever get. And that prize will never fade away. Hallelujah. And let us all work for that, my brother and sister. And let's be steady, steadfast. Next week, I'm conducting a healing session here. I request every one of you to come here. When you're coming, have you to come only one person? What are we to do? We have to bring one more person with you. Praise the Lord. And he introduced to me also. So, brother, this is my gold coin. Last week, somebody introduced to me. And so, brother, this is my gold coin. I was so happy. I was looking for other gold coins from Alucas. But suddenly I saw one person standing in front of me. I said, oh, this is the gold coin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, so let us all try to bring at least one gold coin with you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So my brothers and sisters, let us be steadfast with the Lord. I'm sure 
the god is going to bless you and your families in a powerful way and one day he will grant you the eternal kingdom hallelujah shall we give a big big hand to the lord hallelujah hallelujah my brothers and sisters now let us now uh, and also i want you to intercede you know my team is going to intercede continuously for the whole week my brother and sister with a fasting and prayer for all of you and i also want to request all of you to fast and pray you know if possible you know those who are healthy strong they have to fast and pray give up on meal okay yeah yes so you'll not become thinner if you become slimmer is better right my brothers and sisters yeah you know so and fasting prayer mortification will help and heal many people my brothers and sisters so i want you to do that i'm sure when you are doing that god will bless you for your sacrifice and also you know as the word of god says matthew chapter 6 verse 19 to 20 says very clearly what does it say you know my brothers and sisters you will your treasures will be accumulated where in the king bank of not my sack bank okay bank of heaven your treasures will be accumulated in the bank of heaven where no hackers can hack the best of hackers in this world now you know that no no <laughs> some are laughing other day one poor lady came to me i said brother my all money gone from the bank somebody duped me hacked my bank account i felt very sad for that lady you see my brothers and sisters anything can be hacked in this world isn't it yes and uh, no moth can ever destroy your wealth my brothers and sisters so that wealth every soul you are bringing that will be accumulated in the bank of heaven your wealth praise the lord hallelujah so every one have to try my brothers and sisters to bring at least one soul with you just should not come alone you know so try and i'm sure inform your friends relatives everyone my brothers and sisters i'm sure the god is going to bless you know every one of you you know very powerful way my brothers and sisters see my son was very sick yesterday he had been to london and he ate all the things rubbish over there and he became very <laughs> he became very sick and he was sleeping yesterday he couldn't get up from the bed you see my brothers and sisters then last night i prayed with my team i said lord you uh, heal my son calvin and i bring her and let him come here and play today my brother he is perfectly fit today all glory to my jesus shall we give a big glory to jesus and there is a young girl she wants to share one minute testimony with you you know come maybe where, where are you yeah come 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 neeta neeta yes her name is neeta can you give a, this thing to her neeta wants to share a small testimony with you for good short. evening everyone praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah so i'd like to uh, share a testimony I'll start with the verse Luke 18 verses 27 What is impossible with man is possible with God Praise the Lord Praise the Lord So last year after completing my grade 12 I was looking out for colleges to apply I wanted to study engineering in India and there was one particular college the National Institute of Technology where I wanted to apply but uh, the admission process you know seemed difficult there were issues coming and uh, this was one college I really wanted to go So despite all the problems I knew if there's one person who can pro- solve all these problems it's Jesus. So I turned to him and uh, although the chances seemed bleak for getting in but I knew that Jesus is there. So I had this petition that I'll do 150 uh, divine mercy chaplets and 150 rosaries if I uh, get this and I started praying and uh, we did our part we applied for the college and afterwards uh, around 2 to 3 days later uh when the results were supposed to come uh my family and i we were surprised i had the offer letter from this college and it was for the course that i wanted to study computer science and this was a great miracle all possible because of jesus and the divine mercy my uh, family and i like we're regular visitors to uh, the divine mercy and i think it's only po- possible because of this this is my testimony <laughs> hallelujah Thank you Neeta for sharing your beautiful testimony you know the power of faith in Jesus praise the lord let's all rise up my brothers and sisters we are in the presence of the mighty and powerful god now and um, la- next week there's a blessed sacrament okay you know then the presence of the blessed sacrament there will be miracles healings wonders deliverances you will experience and my brothers and sisters and uh, you will see the glory of god next week praise the lord 
Hallelujah. 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 Shall we lift our hands and praise God? Hallelujah. Ula mashila la baba hala mashila la baba hala mashila. Jesus, we call upon your blessed name. Ula baba 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 baba. Ula mashila la baba hala mashila. Hallelujah. We worship you. We praise you. We thank you. We adore you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now let's worship the Lord with this beautiful hymn, my brothers and sisters, and glorify God. Worthy is your name as we are singing. Let's worship the Lord with the hearts, my brothers and sisters. your eyes for a moment remember the times you heard Jesus our God is awesome God my brothers and sisters 1 John 1 9 says very clearly when you confess your sins he trustworthy and righteous to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all evil so this is the moment ask Jesus pardon for your sins remember the great love of Jesus and book of Peter says, my brother and sister Peter said, it is the costly sacrifice of Jesus' blood to save you. It's not the gold or the silver, my brother and sisters. He has purchased us. He has purchased us, you know, with the costly, the most costly, my brother and sister, cannot be compared with anything. His precious blood. He shed on the cross to save us. What a wonderful God we have, my brothers and sisters. What a loving God. Remember His love for you. Repent for your sins. Come back to Jesus. Talk to Him. Close your eyes for a moment. Talk to Jesus at the moment. Tell Him, I'm sorry, Lord, for the times I hurt. For the times I stripped you. For the times I kicked you. For the times I beat you, the times I spat upon you, I'm truly sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. 
repeat after me this small prayer my brothers and sisters from the bottom of your heart you know this prayer when you pray you know definitely god will work in your life in a powerful way sit this prayer lord jesus lord jesus i am a miserable sinner i am a miserable sinner. i am unworthy i am unworthy to stand in your holy presence stand in your holy presence. forgive me lord jesus forgive me lord jesus wash me, wash me. with your precious blood with your precious blood and sanctify me sanctify Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I confess, I confess with, my with my mouth and believe in my heart, in my heart that, you Lord, that you are my Lord that you are my Savior, are my Savior. send forth your Holy Spirit, forth your Holy Spirit upon me, upon me right, now right now and change my life, change my life. Let, me let me not be the same again the same thank, again. You, thank you Jesus praise you Jesus hallelujah ula mashina labba mahala mashina Ula ma 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 today my brothers and sisters as we are singing this beautiful hymn my brothers and sisters change my heart to lord god is going to replace our stone heart with the heart of flesh today hallelujah, hallelujah. let's sing with the heart today Jesus, Jesus, we call upon your name. Ula Mashila, I swear to us, say that no other name under which one can be saved is only under the name of Jesus. Ula Exodus 15, 26, the Lord says, I am your God, I am your healer. He's here today to heal you. Ula Right now, right now, the Lord is touching all those who have cancer. You be healed. All those who are have back pain, right now, the Lord is touching you. All those who have got eyesight problem, right now, the Lord is touching your eyes and healing you. All those who have frozen shoulders, right? 
touching you and healing you right now my brothers in the god's power is moving ula ma shila la pa pa hala ma shila la na right now the lord's anointing is flowing in this place ula pa 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 all those who are having the leg related problem right now right now the lord is touching your legs ula pa 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 hala ma shila all those who are diabetes right now the lord is touching and healing your diabetes ula ma 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 hala ma shila all those who have a heart disease right now the lord is touching your heart ula pa 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 the mighty power of god is here and he is touching and healing you ula ma 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 hala ma shila hallelujah in the mighty and powerful name of jesus christ of nazareth every disease be healed ula ma shila hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord for touching your people right now let's invite the holy spirit with this beautiful hymn holy spirit come with your fire Second Corinthians three seventy says, "By the Spirit of God, there is liberty." Hallelujah! So, my brother, let's invite the Holy Spirit right now and liberate ourselves from any bondages we we are in. I believe the Lord has touched every one of us in a very special way today. Hallelujah! Whoever felt the joy of the Spirit, lift your hands, please. Hallelujah! Almost hundred percent. Okay, shall we give a big hand to the Lord? Hallelujah! Next week I have very powerful testimonies of the healings, my brothers and sisters. I want to share with you, and also we have the blessed sacrament. Remember, and also we are giving you bread and water.
to break your fast. Whether you are fasting or no fasting, you will get bread and water. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, and please do pre prepare yourself well and go for a confession if you are not gone for a confession. Because confession will help you to set you free from all the bondages. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So my brothers, let's give the beautiful. Now join us for intercession. Every day we have intercession. 7.30 to 8.30, my brother, on Zoom. So please do join us, my brothers and sisters. We have distributed the slips for you, right? Yeah, so you have it and please do join us. Join us for also. Now, anything you require, my brothers and YouTube, anything, any questions you have, you can call me anytime. You know, any prayers if you require, definitely we'll help you. Our team will pray for you, okay? And now let's go into the final hymn, my brothers and sisters, okay? Join in. I was walking down the dead end road, carrying such a heavy load. But he lifted me with a mighty hand, and he told his feet just how to dance. Thank God I'm free, free to run again, free to throw away these chains. Thank God I'm free, free to live again, never holding back again. Thank God I'm free, thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free. Oh, I just can't go back to where I've been. Living captive to the fear of man. I will not give up, I won't give in. Cause I'm holding up and back. Cause I'm holding on to you. Hallelujah!